Hello student, welcome to our last lesson and in this lesson we are going to look at applications of radioactivity. We start with the medical application. Now one, it is used to destroy all these radioactive isotopes, they can be used to destroy cancerous tissues and this will only work if the patient is exposed to the correct dose. Because if again you overexpose the patient, those radiations can kill even the useful tissues or useful cells in the body. For example, if you are using gobat 60 and caesium 137, it is possible to destroy cancerous growth without serious damage to other tissues of the patient. Then we have radioactive iodine 131. This one can be used to, to monitor the functioning of thyroid grad. That is, this radioactive substance enables the doctors to follow the path of iodine through the body. Then we have radioactive sodium which is used to monitor the blood circulation. Also we have that the gamma rays from Gobat 60 are used to sterilize the surgical in equipment in hospitals and also those radiations can be used to monitor growth in bones and healing of fractures. Then from there we have the second application that is detecting pipe bursts. When we have that underground pipes that are carrying water and oil, they may have leakages or bursts. But how do you get to know without destroying or without without getting the, the, the pipes up? We always mix or the water or oil is mixed with radioactive substance. Then we have a detector that is placed on the path or that is moved on the path of those pipes on the now the upper part. So if the radi radiations are detected, then you will know that there is an opening. There is an opening of the pipe. So that way we are able to detect. So we are saying a detector is passed on the ground near the area and the radiations will be detected. So if the radiations are detected, then automatically you know that there, there is a burst of that pipe. Then number three, we have agricultural applications. Now radioactivity may be used in monitoring photosynthesis and related processes. For example, we have carbon four oxide containing radioactive carbon 14 is used and the path of this carbon can be followed during the growth of the path of the plant. So we are saying this one, if we use this one, the path of this carbon 14 can be followed during the growth of this plant. And therefore you can be able to monitor the process of photosynthesis. Then we have the absorption of phosphate fertilizers. Now radioactive phosphorus can be used to determine the rate of absorption of the fertilizer. In other words, the radioactive phosphorus is combined with our fertilizer and then this one can be monitored how it is moving so we can be able to to get the rate of absorption of our fertilizer when it is mixed with our radioactive phosphorus then from there we have carbon dating we have seen it earlier that when we have carbon 14 it can be used to give us the age of fossils so we are saying that living organisms take in small quantities of radioactive carbon-14 in addition to the ordinary carbon-12. So when this one dies or the, the, the living organism dies, the carbon-12 to carbon-14 in the uh, organisms remains fairly constant and the count rate can give this value. But when it dies, the intake of carbon is no more and therefore the ratio changes and this carbon 14 decays because it is radioactive as as it decays the ratio of carbon 12 to carbon 14 changes it declines with the time so the new ratio of carbon 12 to carbon 14 can be used to determine the age of a fossil then number another another application we have the detection of flaws then cracks and air spaces in welded joints can be detected using gamma radiation from Gobat 16. So we have that maybe in the, when we are in the industry, we have the joints. You want to see whether that joint is, is firm 
or it has some air spaces what you do is that the gopad 60 is placed on one side of the joint and a detector which is photographic film is placed on the other side so if the this photographic film is blackened then you will know that there is an air space or there is a clock that is allowing those radiations to pass. So that way you can be able to know the clock of a welded joint. Then we have gauging the thickness of thin metal or paper sheet. So in industry which manufactures thin metal foils, papers and plastics, radioactive radiations can be used to determine and maintain the required thickness. For example, if a better source is placed on one side of the foil, and a GM tube, when we talk of a GM tube, is another machine that is used to detect the presence of radiation. So you are placing the beta source on one side, and on the other side you place a GM tube. So the count rate will be measured of the thickness of the metal foil. And this will give us now the thickness, and you can automatically give the required thickness. We have this as our diagram here. We have the beta source, we have the GM tube or what we call the Gage Muller tube. I've said that this one is just a tube that detects the presence of radi radiations. So as you pass the thin metal foil here, if it is very thin or if it is thick, the beta particles cannot pass. Remember the penetrating power. So we are able to get the counts and those counts will give us now the thickness of that metal foil. So that way you are able to maintain the required thickness. Then from the, we, there we have other uses and other uses we have preservation. So gamma rays can be used to kill bacteria in tinned food or what we call the canned food. So they, ca they can kill bacteria and by so doing they can preserve that food. This tinned food can last for a longer time and it can be used in other countries or they can be used in this country for a while. Then gamma rays can also be used to kill pests in stored grains. That way the, it is also being used in preservation. Then it can be used to measure the level of food in canned and packed food. Then also, uh, as another use, they can be used to manufacture or even manufacture of nuclear weapons and atomic bombs. Then from there, we have dangers of radioactivity. One, we have environmental pollution. And this one occurs when radioactive materials emit radiations into the atmosphere. And this long-term exposure of low dosages of these radiations can cause genetic mutation in living tissue, leading to anemia, bone cancer, and other forms of cancer. And this one happened in USA in the Three Miles Island nuclear accident. This happened in 1979, what we call the Chernobyl Belarus in former USSR in 1986 when there was an explosion. So there was an explosion. The radioactive were released. The radioactive radiations were released. But the effects are being felt many years after the explosion. That is environmental pollution. Now the disposal of this nuclear waste is of particular concern because some of the radioactive materials have a very long half-life. So the way we expose them, it's very important that they be disposed correctly because if they are exposed to human beings, to animals or other living organisms, we still have what we call the genetic mutation and this will lead either to anemia and other bone or other forms of cancer. So this implies that it is it takes many years for the intensity of radiation to reduce, hence the effect may be felt for a very many years after disposal. For example, if you have a lead block that is used for burying the materials, they, they, corrode, they corrode long before radioactivity reaches completion. Now also, we have that testing of nuclear weapons in the ocean 
also causes environmental pollution since plants and other living organisms may take in radioactive materials released in water. So again, you can see that this radio the radioactive substance are causing a lot of environmental pollution and this pollution is leading to, in health, it is a health hazard because it is bringing many, many challenges or many diseases. So when not put in proper use, radioisotopes can be used as weapons of mass destructive as it, it happened in the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan during the Second World War. So you have to ensure that if you have any radioactive material, they be kept in a conducive environment such that they are not exposed. That way they will not destroy the environment or they will not pollute the environment. The effect of the atomic bomb apart from immediate destruction and loss of lives is still felt many years after. Then from there, we are still moving to the dangers of radioactivity. We have titanium mining in Kuala. Now this one is the ninth most abundant element on the earth, that is titanium. So it is present in igneous locks and the sediments derived, derived from them. So titanium deposits have been discovered in Kuala district in Kenya. And this one, although those five isotopes, they are stable, we still believe that there are some elements or there are some traces of radioactivity. So a few unstable isotopes are also known to exist. And if there is unstable, then it means that the radioactivity is, is happening. And when we have radioactivity, then we have those emissions, beta, gamma, and alpha. And when we have those radiations, then they can, they are held the hazards because the, the individuals around there, they are exposed. So their tissues or their body cells can be killed if those radiations penetrate. So although tests of titanium in quality for radioactivity have proved to be negative, it is still calls for proper planning for its mining. This is because it is suspected to be radioactive. Remember we are talking of there are some traces of unstable isotopes. This will help to avoid occurrence of disasters like the ones that we have mentioned earlier. And remember, this, these disasters are even being felt many years after the explosion or many years after the events because of their half-life. So KRS disposal of radioactive waste could cost many lives. Then we have, after the dangers, how do we control the environment pollution? So environmental pollution can be controlled by proper use, storage, and disposal of radioactive materials, as well as regular checks of the equipment which emits radiations. So if we are able to check this, then we can be able to control our radioactive, and that will ensure that we don't pollute our environment. So the concept of personal protection, when you are handling or when you are working in, a in an industry with the radioactive substance, then you should, to take, you should take care of yourself. That is, one, do not handle any radioactive material unnecessarily. Then use correct handling equipment. For example, you can use tongs instead of using bare hearts. And if you must work with radioactive substance, do not go near them unnecessarily. And we always say that it is good to wear a lead jacket and that will help you to avoid the penetration of those radiation. Then if you, work, if you have to work near radioactive substance, do so for a short time as possible. And when working, you need to shield yourself. We have seen that when such shields are made of special glass or lead block, that will protect you from these radiations. Then from there we have the assignment. Again, this assignment are testing what we have just learned. Attempt them. And as you attempt them, prepare for the end of topic exam. So thank you and let us meet in another topic or in another subject.